I'm just back from a, spending a few days away in the very heart of England, in the county of Rutland, uh, smallest administrative county in Britain, and located about as far as you can get from a, a beach or a coastline, right in the centre of England, and featuring one of the most unusual and rare survivors from the Norman period, a complete Norman, or near complete Norman Great Hall. It's in the centre of Oakham Castle. Oakham Castle, um, there are remains of the walls, there is a lot of archaeology under the ground, but the biggest upstanding feature is this superb Norman building, probably from 1180 onwards. Uh, it's been rated as one of the finest Norman secular buildings, that is a non-church building uh, surviving in Britain. So here we are to look at the Great Hall at Oakham Castle in Rutland. Oakham today is a charming market town. We're here on the Saturday and the people are enjoying the Saturday market, various stalls laid out. What they probably don't realise is the building that they're in front of here, the uh, uh, the post office building is actually built on the filled in moat of the castle and the castle is to be found just behind this structure you see the post office uh, down an alleyway to the right hand side of the building and there you are moving inside the castle gateway now a, a late 17th century ornamental gateway we come into the bailey the church was just visible to the left there's some of the earth walls creeping away into the distance, and there is the main hall itself. Superb building dating back to um, about 1180, but also one of the oldest courtrooms in Britain. It's been in use that way since the 1290s, and it's one of the reasons why the building has survived to today. There's the rest of the walls, and in the far corner there is the remains of the Norman Mott. Moving the camera to this position, we can view the building from a slightly different angle. Again, this dates to about 1180. It is a, a double aisled structure inside, which we'll see in a second, supported by half round arches. And up on the roof, a couple of rather unusual figures. This one appears to have a centaur, um, half man, half horse. For some reason, double back and looking back towards the chap at the other end and up the other end we appear to have a medieval knight possibly on a barded horse uh, but if someone can give me a better identification I'll be happy to listen to it so it's the roof of Oakham Hall I could find very little online about Oakham Castle so I fell back on YouTube I found a fascinating documentary one hour long by uh, Matthew Morris of the University of Leicester Archaeological Service. He describes the work carried out by his team over several years, but building on uh, an initial documentary film made by Channel 4's Time Team. Time Team did a dig at one end of the building and out in the courtyard and found certain um, foundations. And based on that, the, the Leicester team came in, led by Matthew Morris, and found a lot more. Uh, I'll cut to some of his drawings in a minute, which I've borrowed from his own documentary under the sort of fair use provisions. I hope you won't mind. This is a, a drawing of the castle as pretty much first found um, by the team. Uh, you can see the church, which is the big black lump to the left. The hall is the big black lump in the centre of the castle and you can see within the castle uh, courtyard a number of bumps etc. Uh, each one of those is believed to cover an existing building, most of which were levelled in the 17th century by the new owner. Um, you can see the earth walls that surround the um, castle today, mostly earth but with some stone revetment etc still remaining within inside that and there's evidence 
of uh, the Norman Mott in the bottom right hand corner uh, presumed evidence of a gate and then there's two bastions or possible towers showing between the church and the castle itself north of that is the fish ponds and other earthworks uh, of unknown provenance if you would care to compare this with the earlier drawing this is what uh, over a period of several years the Leicester team managed to uncover you can see now that where those lumps and bumps were before we now have some fairly definite indications of buildings and in particular you can see the church in the pink to the left and the existing hall in the pink in the centre of the uh, castle and they managed to unearth what appears to be the kitchen at one end which may link up with two doorways which you'll see in the end of the building in a moment and out in the centre of the courtyard you can actually see the wells as a, as a water source um, the large tower nearest the church it may have had a postern gate fitted into it at the side they're not sure if it's a postern or a window it's so badly damaged and it looks like the um, solar building for the lord may have actually been built onto the back of this big tower sadly mostly down to foundation level now phil kenning produced this interpretation for the leicester team you can see bottom left uh, a representation of the original Norman church, not the grand building you see now, uh, within a moated and embanked enclosure. There's palisade up on the enclosure, so this would be just after 1160, 1180 when it first constructed. And you can see a prominent mot uh, over to the right. Now this has mostly disappeared, it's been chopped away by the later in introduction of uh, stone defences. Uh, and you can also see a prototype version of the hall, that's the um, uh, V-shaped building sticking up there, and that appears to be a sort of Norman timber version, of, which was later replaced in stone on the same site. This is a second Phil Kenning interpretation showing the castle more like the middle of the 14th century we can now see that the mot that used to be in the bottom corner has disappeared with a possible suggestion that there was a corner bastion there replacing it uh, a solid gateway most of which hasn't been found and then the uh, present great hall is visible up towards the uh, far wall there and beyond it is the solar block which was found partly by time team and its position was then reconfirmed by the University of Leicester um, the wet moat remains and you can now see that the church has greatly expanded and become a much bigger structure moving inside we can start to see just what a superb structure this is in the interior the aisle arches on either side holding up the roof are one of the best examples of Norman uh, architecture, Norman carving I've ever seen. They look as if they come off a film set, it looks like they could be manufactured yesterday. But in fact they probably date anywhere from 1180 to about 1240, probably the earlier date. You can see the classic Norman half round or Romanesque arches above. Uh, you may begin to notice there's an awful lot of horseshoes on the walls, but we'll get to those in just a moment because that's a bit of a feature of, of Oakham. Um, I'm just at the moment more interested in the architecture. Um, series of stone pillars, they've got these wonderful carvings in uh, elaborate Norman style. Changing position, we now see the other arcade on the other side of the building. Um, this st great stone arcade supports the roof. Again, you've got wonderful detailing. Nearly every one of these is individual in some way or another. Uh, all of this is seven to eight hundred years old. And it looks as crisp and as neat as if it had been manufactured yesterday. And this is because for most of the time this building has been used as a, a court of law. It's the oldest court of law in Britain. In constant use since about 1290 odd. Behind you can see the horseshoes. 
And the tradition there is that every time a, a peer of the realm or a member of the aristocracy or a member of royalty visits Oakham, they have to leave behind a horseshoe. And the earliest one they have is one from Edward IV, and he gifted it in 1470. Such is the county's fascination with horseshoes um, that the horseshoe now actually features on the Rutland County flag. Green flag with an upside down horseshoe, field of acorns, etc. Horseshoes are traditionally regarded as lucky because they have seven holes, which you can see there, seven being a lucky number. But my father and other members of my family always taught them, taught me, if you put a horseshoe upside down like that, the luck falls out. Evidently, the people of Oakham don't agree, because every single horseshoe in the hall is shown in that fashion. Uh, points down, curved side up. And I would say that that's upside down. Returning outside, we get some detail here on one of the windows. Norman arches are characteristically half round. These have got a slight point to them, which suggests they might be a little bit later than early Norman. But you can also see this characteristic sort of square hatching, sort of dog tooth arrangement down the side. That is very, very typically Norman. So um, this could be late Norman, very early medieval. Moving to the end of the building, uh, we are now standing approximately where they think the kitchens were located. And the two doors that you see at ground level there are believed to have been uh, entrances through to the through the kitchen area. And if the hall was being was functioning as a place of revelry, feasting, merriment, etc., the food will be brought in and out through those two doors. However, that isn't the only function it performed. It was a court of law. It was a manorial court. Uh, the lord of the manor or lord of the castle would do his day-to-day -day business here. So it's a multi-purpose building, and it's his legal um, connotations of the fact that it was a court of law that's allowed it to survive for this long. Uh, it is still the oldest courthouse in Britain. Cutting away to the castle wall, you can see where the uh, Leicester archaeological team have been clearing a lot of bush, brush, undergrowth, trees, etc., some of which were actually damaging the walls. But it has exposed a good section of the original medieval wall. This would be late Norman, early medieval, with a, a substantial earth embankment behind it. Uh, this is on the side towards the church, and indeed there's actually a school on that side as well. So it gives you an idea of the great thickness of this wall, and of course the earth revetment on this side increases its resistance to attack. Now cutting across to here, this again is pointing out towards the church, and it's another view of the same cut. And it does give you an idea of how much uh, stone was uh, incorporated into the walls. Uh, apparently the people of, of Oakham don't know how much uh, uh, the stonework still exists, but not all of it has been cleared away. But uh, they're gradually working their way through the site and um, if they were to come back, there's an awful lot of archaeology still to be dug. This is another view towards the church side of the castle. Again, that is the, um, the raised earth bank leading up to stonework, which is holding it and stopping it from slumping over into the moat. Uh, the fencing there has been put up by the archaeological team and all that side there was originally covered in undergrowth, trees, etc. And you can still see the cut roots, and they've cleared a considerable length of the old medieval wall, exposing at least one possible tower. This is the present parish church, uh, clearly late medieval. This would be mostly 14th and 15th, perhaps even a little bit of 16th century but it's believed to be on the site of the original Norman church, um, and it's within very easy walking distance of the castle. Churches were often cited for the convenience of the castellan, lord, etc., not the villagers. However, if we now step inside the church, we find something even more Norman. This is the font. Now, the font cover is relatively modern, but the font bowl itself, which we're looking at there, 
and which looks just like the arcading inside of Oakham Hall. That is a genuine Norman font, but the base of it is believed to be a former medieval, perhaps village cross that's been chopped down. If you want to find out more about Oakham Castle, um, I had to trawl through Wikipedia, which you can see here. As you can see, it's all dates from 1180 to 1190. Built by Walkerlin de Ferrers, who was Lord of the Manor here, and he was great nephew of Robert de Ferrers. Uh, Wikipedia will give you a lot more uh, detail than I've given you here. Um, it's a decent set of connections to other other things to do with this, and they explain a little bit more about the uh, the horseshoe tradition. Uh, say the earliest horseshoe they got is 1470, gifted by Edward IV. And he gifted that after winning the nearby Battle of Empingham, about six miles away. Finally, I have to mention again, the University of Leicester. Uh, this digital talk by Matthew Morris, who led the site dig here following Time Team's original uh, investigation. I've pinched a little bit of their artwork under fair use, uh, etc. But I've given them full credit for it. Uh, I'm going to put a link to this in the text below my film and I'm also going to put up a link for the Wikipedia and anything else I can find that's related. Have a click around, it's a fascinating site and one which um, I think has considerable potential for further archaeological investigation. This one hour documentary will tell you what they have found so far but I think they only touched about a quarter of it. This has been a Warspite production. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up. If you've really enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Warspite out, and have a very good day.